Hey my dear warriors, welcome to the Un Academy Need English channel. I hope I'm audible as well as visible. This is your Captain Shreyas going live for the last class of your electric charges and fields. This is lecture number four. So in case you have missed and you have not attended the previous three classes, please check out the playlist or the past videos. There you'll find the, all the previous concepts with examples, with theory and everything that you need to complete that particular subtopic. Hi Moana, hello Shanti, hello Yogita, hello Janu. Come on guys, start chatting, start putting your chats in the chat box, start marking your attendance and you know what to do. Your Guru Dakshina as always is always that like button and also if you have not yet subscribed to the Unacademy Need English channel, hit that subscribe button because I'm going to teach you from basics till neat level, including for board preparation on this channel, free of cost for all the students, right? So I'm doing 11th also and 12th also. This was a 12th standard chapter. I will be taking up, you know, more chapters of 11th and 12th, both very good guys. Cool. Dr. Asta is also here. Asman is also here. Kirtika, welcome. Mohammad. Hello, Yogita. And many of you probably have even attended my morning class in the Avenger batch. And if you are from the Avenger batch, just put the letter A in the chat box so that I know you guys are Avengers too. Great. So let's begin with today's class. Now, what exactly are we going to do? Like you can see from the thumbnail or even the title of the session, it's all about Gauss law and applications. Gauss law and applications. Komla, the PDF will be available, uh, I think in the notes section, in the dashboard only. I think it will be there somewhere. I will need to check because I don't know how the student interface looks like, but uh, it should be there somewhere on the dashboard only. Just need to explore that. Looks like Satvika, Yogita, all of you are Avengers. All right, great. Now, see guys, in this particular lecture, we will talk about, uh, you know, Gauss's law. It will make use of the concept of electric flux. Do you all know what electric flux is? Because that concept will be used here. I'll slightly revise it, don't worry, before we begin, just in case you have forgotten. Number two, we'll see the applications in a way that we will find the electric field due to different geometries. I will do the derivations here. So guys, it will be helpful for your boards also help you build the understanding of Gauss's law for the need level. Okay. So let's begin my dear students. Let's begin. All right. So let's talk about first the electric flux concept in case you have forgotten about it. Okay. So just hold on. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So what is this electric flux? So talking about electric, electric flux. It's a scalar quantity. It's a scalar quantity, remember? And it is a measure of the, measure of the field crossing, measure of the field crossing an area, right? That is what uh, electric flux was all about. If you remember closely enough in the last lecture, I had told you that if I have some surface, I can draw that surfaces area vector. Area vector is a vector which is perpendicular to that area, perpendicular to that area. The electric field might be in some other direction. Let's say it is like this, maybe making an angle say theta, maybe making an angle say theta like this. Then the flux cutting through it is just given by electric field dot that area vector. You can also expand this as E into A into cos of theta. E into A into cos of theta. Everybody remembers this? Everybody remembers this? It's a dot product of field and area. Exactly. Very good. So that is what flux was all about. More field passes, flux increases. Big area, more flux. Okay. If angle changes also, then you will see that the flux will change. The line should pierce through it, should pierce through that area. Only then you will see that there is flux, else there will be no flux. Now, 
there is one very important sign convention regarding electric flux my dear students see i don't know how many of you thought about this in the previous class but this is one common doubt which students ask and it is very valid sir if i take a surface should i take the area vector like this or should i take the area vector like this option 1 or option 2 what do you think is the answer for this come on my dear students volume is less is it okay just one second i think there is i hope the volume is fine now is the volume fine yep yogita everyone yes yes both exactly very good both can be taken as area vector exactly now when you can take both as the area vector is when this surface this surface is basically open surface surface is basically open what do i mean by open do you see the boundaries over here do you see the boundaries over here exactly that surface has some boundary there is some perimeter to it there is some perimeter to it then it is a open surface like for example i can take this notebooks this particular page this is an or this complete notebook as a whole it's a open surface because there is a perimeter to it okay it is not closed so what is the example of the exact other type of surface that is basically called as the closed surface that is basically called as the what closed surface look at this this is a closed surface like a balloon if you take a balloon right it's a closed surface my t-shirt it's a open surface because my neck is coming out of it my hands are coming out of it it's open but imagine somebody stitches this neck part somebody stitches this part somebody stitches this part somebody stitches everything then that's it guys there is nothing which is open nothing can go in nothing can go out that is a closed surface everybody understands this this is basically a closed surface now any closed surface has a name given to it if you have any closed surface that is also called as gaussian gaussian what surface that is also called as gaussian surface everybody clear till this point so open surface is there closed surface is there closed surface means no opening it has no perimeter nothing can go in nothing can go out it's completely stitched from everywhere in such a closed surface you cannot take anything as the area vector always you have to choose always in such cases you have to choose outward something which is coming out as the area vector something which is coming out as the area vector something which is coming out as the area vector so basically what happens is the moment you have closed surface outward direction is taken positive outward direction is the direction of the area vector you cannot choose anything so for this gaussian surface outward so i'll make it very very clear over here my dear students so for this gaussian surface area vector must be area vector must be outwards must be outwards very very important is that very clear absolutely everybody clear about it so i have a logical question for all of you let's see if you guys can answer this imagine i have a surface which goes like this okay imagine i have a surface which goes somewhat like this it's a closed surface it's a closed surface okay imagine there is electric field lines which is coming out of it electric field lines which is coming out of it will that be considered as positive flux or negative flux if these are the electric field lines which are coming out of this particular surface should i take it as positive flux or negative flux think about it answer in the chat box no problem shanti hello surjit welcome bachcha 
yes this will be very good gautam raj this will be taken as positive flux this will be taken as positive electric flux but if the electric field lines are entering inside they are going inside that surface then it will be taken as negative flux so this is your sign convention my dear students for a closed surface very very important for any closed surface what is that sign convention of that electric flux everybody should know this everybody should know this okay so when is the flux negative and when is the flux positive everything i have mentioned it right over here cool this will help me build that concept of gauss law very easily okay so let's talk about what is basically gauss's law so this was the introductory part for that gauss's law what is electric flux i have done it last lecture lecture 3 in case you have missed it please watch it okay everything i have detailed it out in that lecture 3 then area vector can be chosen anywhere for a open surface but the moment it is closed outward is taken positive inward is taken as negative okay now what is this gaussian law what is this gauss's law this is a important law which relates flux of a closed surface with the charge which is inside the surface and this uh, law involves an integration but the funny part is you don't have to integrate the funny part is you don't have to integrate imagine somebody tells you you have to do math okay maths is a subject but you don't have to do maths you have maths as a subject but you don't have to do maths that's how funny this law is in spite of having integration 99.99% of the times this is used to avoid integration so this law relates the flux of a closed surface with the charge which is inside star okay star understood so it relates the total flux of a closed surface with the charge which is inside of it i will give you the law don't worry about it and the funny part the irony is even though the formula has integration it is used to avoid that integration to make the calculations very simple so what does this law say this law says basically okay so let me just create a template yes so this law basically says the total electric the total electric flux from a closed surface or one and the same thing gaussian surface gaussian surface is is basically the total charge enclosed total charge enclosed divided by the permittivity of the medium which is epsilon not everybody remembers what epsilon not was it was nothing but the permittivity permittivity of free space in this case it will be vacuum okay that is your permittivity this is what that law says so let's try to make sense out of it imagine imagine i take certain charges imagine i take certain charges one charge is here let's say it is called q1 another charge is here let's say it is q2 let's say another charge is here let's say it is q3 let's say another charge is here let's say i call it q4 these are four charges i imagine a closed surface i imagine basically a closed surface or basically a gaussian surface so closed surface or a gaussian surface might just probably look like this okay this is a closed surface gaussian surface okay this is a gaussian surface now there will be electric field everywhere because there are so many charges so there will be electric field lines everywhere there will be electric field lines everywhere so there will be some flux which is coming in some flux which is going out so now the total flux from that closed surface meaning meaning if i take the total flux of that particular closed surface because i know there will be some field lines which will be going out some field lines which will be coming in some field lines which will be going out some field lines which will be coming in some field lines which will be going out some field lines which will be coming in okay 
some might be coming in more some might be going out more i don't know who is more who is less i don't know i'm just showing some field lines here and there the total flux will be nothing but nothing but my dear students it will be the total charge inside divided by epsilon naught now think about it what is that charge which is inside you guys tell me think and tell me what is the charge which is inside is it q1 q2 q3 or q4 i think inside the surface only q1 and q3 are there because i can clearly see q2 and q4 are outside the surface only these two charges are inside so technically this should be just q1 plus q2 divided by epsilon naught q1 plus q2 divided by epsilon naught everybody agrees with this excellent not q2 and q4 not q2 and q4 okay everyone fine now also remember this flux which is enclosed this flux which is the closed surface flux i can also write it as think like this for a surface it is electric field into area for one single surface it is electric field into area but when you have this random surface there are so many small small areas and at every point the field is also different think about it if i take a surface here there will be an area vector maybe like this that area vector will be a small area vector i can call it da vector i can call it da vector and at that particular location maybe the electric field is in this particular direction maybe the electric field is in this particular direction making certain angle theta over here so in that area there is some flux in that area there is some oh sorry why did i say q1 plus q i said q1 plus q3 and i put q1 plus q2 i'm so sorry guys yeah so this was q1 plus q3 my bad my bad q1 and q3 yes so i was going number numerically one two sequentially so one and three is inside q2 and q4 is outside so q1 plus q3 my bad apologies now coming back over here there will be some flux passing through this area there will be some flux passing through da area some more flux passing through some more area some more area here 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 so all these areas there is some some flux passing through it little little flux passing through it so i have to take into account all those fluxes right i have to take into account all those fluxes right so what do i need to do add them i need to add them what is the meaning of addi addition many such terms if i have to add them what is that term called obviously integration so can i just write this as cyclic integral electric field dot area vector electric field dot area vector electric field dot area vector is flux electric field dot area vector is flux electric field dot area vector is flux so integrate so summation that is why that symbol has come now generally you put this symbol why do you put that symbol that circle what is the significance of that circle that is basically called as cyclic integral or basically closed surface integral closed surface integral closed surface integral meaning it just tells that do not leave even one single part just like when you have to clean the house your mom will tell na if you leave even one corner na you will get one chappal so this cyclic integral means you cannot leave even one corner of that surface each and every area has to be accounted for or else you will get one chappal understood flying slipper you will get understood everyone okay you cannot leave any surface is everything clear till this point is everything clear till this point very good very good now let me just take some random examples where let's say there is a positive charge maybe there is a negative charge maybe there is a positive charge all right there is a positive charge over here again and i show some of the electric field lines maybe some field lines are going like this maybe some field lines are going like this some field lines are going like this like this like this like this maybe like this maybe like this 
yep so all these are basically electric field lines coming out of this particular system I'm just showing few of them and just showing few of them very good now I draw a Gaussian surface I just draw a Gaussian surface imagine I draw a Gaussian surface like this this is my Gaussian surface everybody can see this this is my Gaussian surface this is my Gaussian surface so for this particular surface assuming this charge is Q1 this charge is Q2 this charge is minus Q3 minus Q3 can you tell me what will be the integration of electric field with that area vector everywhere what will it be equal to I think the only charges enclosed are 1 and 2 so it will be just Q1 plus Q2 divided by epsilon naught divided by epsilon naught everybody with me yes very good now I want you guys to tell me is this electric field which I am writing over here is this electric field because of 1 because of 2 because of 3 or because of everyone who and all are included in this who and all are included in this so if I go to any point let's say for example I'm going over here let's say I'm going over here and let us just say this is the area vector over there and at that particular location you know there is some kind of electric field at that particular point making some angle so my dear students this electric field is because of who and all 1 and 2 1 2 3 or 3 or none of them I think Akantya Muhammad have got it right yes my dear students this is because of 1 Q1 Q2 and also Q3 or that negative Q3 all of them basically all of them think about it if I just tell you find the electric field at that point electric field at that point what will you do because of one there will be one field because of two there will be one field because of three there will be a field you will superimpose all the fields and find the net field this E is always the net electric field Lakshmi when you are studying if you ask how many marks will come from this chapter that to one year before that is the worst mistake you can do never study a chapter by asking the question how many marks will come from this chapter if you want to ask such questions sorry I am not going to tell that because this is not two weeks before the exam two weeks before one month before I will tell you one year you have you have every right and it is your duty to study each and every chapter irrespective of how many marks will come even if one question comes you have to study even if 10 question comes you have to study if you are going to choose a chapter based on how many marks one year from now all the best for your preparation okay so coming back over here my dear students yes this field will be always because of everyone now the interesting thing about Gauss law is the LHS of the equation the LHS of the equation has a term E which is a contribution of every single charge but the funny part is on the right hand side on the right hand side the terms which are there are only because of the charges which are there inside so that is the interesting thing about Gauss's law that is the interesting thing about the Gauss's law let me just block it over here the LHS the LHS of this particular equation is containing a term which is a contribution of every single charge be it inside or be it outside but the on the right hand side the term which is there is only because of the charges inside keep these things in mind okay I hope this is clear all right so can you guys tell me what will be the flux because of a single charge let me see if you guys can answer this particular question let me see if you can answer this question due to due to a single charge Q the total flux the total flux is how much my dear students because of a single charge let's say my charge is like this let's say my charge is like this obviously the electric field will go in every 
पॉसिबल डायरेक्शन फ्रंट बैक टॉप बॉटम लेफ्ट राइट एवरीवेयर सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स व्हाट इज द टोटल इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स बिकॉज ऑफ वन सिंगल चार्ज कैन यू गाइस टेल मी इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्यू एंड एफ साइल ऑन नॉट सो इफ यू ड्रॉ गोशियन सर्फेस इफ यू ड्रॉ गोशियन सर्फेस सो फॉर दिस सर्फेस द टोटल फ्लक्स विल बी चार्ज इन साइड विच इज क्यू डिवाइडेड बाय एफ साइल ऑन नॉट दैट्स इट इट्स क्यू बाय एफ साइल ऑन नॉट वेरी गुड साक्षी वेरी गुड मोहना एक्सेलेंट है गौतम राज that's the answer very good nothing else awesome so are you ready for some questions i have put up all these important things over here whatever i have discussed so this is basically your gauss's law like you can see this is exactly what your gauss's law is okay i'm blocking it then i have also uh, given you the uh, you know integration form as well and this gauss's law is true for all the surfaces which are closed and that i have also mentioned about the term on the right hand side but uh, you know uh, uh, the term on the right hand side is only because of the charges which are inside the charges which are inside the surface but but the term on the left hand side is because of both both the inside as well as the right side charges okay and i told you in the beginning the gauss law is mainly used where you want to simplify the problem you want to find the field in a very simple manner how to do that you will see all these pointers in the application part you will see when there is symmetry when there is some kind of uniform distribution it becomes very simple and easy to find the uh, electric field using the gauss's law okay and remember gauss law is dependent on coulomb's law and coulomb's law is dependent on gauss law that is why you will see that if gauss law fails even coulomb's law is invalid and if coulomb's law fails then even gauss law is invalid okay so they are interdependent they are two sides of the same coin it's just looking at it in a different way whether you look at it from coulomb's law or gauss's law the problem might become lengthy or short but if one fails the other also fails so let's start solving some questions yep now there is a charge q inside a gaussian spherical surface if the radius is doubled then the net outward electric flux will come on my dear students will be becoming half will remain the same will be doubled will become four times very interesting question i have a charge which is there over here okay i have a charge which is there right over here and then i take a gaussian surface like this i take a gaussian surface which is like this it's a circle now i take another circle of double the radius come on my dear students what do you think should be the answer this is of 2r radius the earlier one was just of r radius what do you think yep come on my dear students whatever field line will cross the blue line will also cross the green line whatever field will cross the blue line will also cross the green line whatever will cross blue will cross green whatever will cross blue will cross green in fact by definition of gauss law total flux is enclosed charge by epsilon not whether you do it for the blue surface or for the green surface it's the same thing so hence my dear students the answer should be same which is option b yep it is same whether you take the blue surface charge inside is q whether you take the green surface the charge inside is q only so net flux will be basically q by epsilon not it will not change no matter how big surface you draw many students think this way that sir flux was sir but flux was integration of you know electric field with area sir area has increased no sir so if area increases flux should also increase did you also think about it that way sir the area is increased so even the flux should also increase but did you also think that when area increased at that location the field strength reduced at that location when you go far away the strength of that field has reduced because the lines are going far away so electric field has reduced so they have compensated both of them and that is the reason why the flux remained the same that is the reason why the compensation happened and the flux neither increased nor decreased beautiful question guys moving on to the next one what is the flux through a face of a cube of side a 
if a point charge is inside it at its center visualize draw you will get the answer within maybe 10 seconds after you draw it after you draw it it is just pure visualization so just start by drawing a cube guys okay just draw a cube maybe come on think about a charge which is inside of it yep think about a charge which is inside of it something like this this is that charge q so what will happen my dear students there will be some electric field coming out this way there will be some electric field coming out basically this way there will be some electric field coming out this way also right and there will be some electric field going down also there will be some electric field going back also there will be some electric field going this way also left side also now totally how many surfaces six surfaces are there totally six surfaces are there we know that the total flux from a charged particle the total flux from a charged particle is q by epsilon naught which is also basically total in that cube in that particular cube now all the six faces will have the same flux how much ever flux goes right will go down will go front will go back will go top will go left so the flux will get distributed equally so can i say this flux is six times the flux through each face each face so basically my dear students what is the flux through each face take that six down so it will be q by basically six times of epsilon naught so that is option c for captain shreyas very good asta gautam raj mohana very good pravina excellent that is the answer got it so i know that the total flux will be q by epsilon naught it will get distributed equally so whatever goes top front back everything same so six surfaces each one will get 1616161616 to make it a complete u q by epsilon naught very good let's move on to the next one beautiful conceptual question the net electric flux in the following diagram is due to q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 you can see the charges the total electric flux is because of which all charges come on option a b c d thank you janu <laughs> akshaya uh, sorry akankya rat saying a mohana saying a gautam raj saying a kanu saying jkl what is this jack on the jill 1 2 3 a very good guys this is basically nothing but gauss law that's all so net flux is only because of inside charges by epsilon naught inside is q1 q2 and q3 that's all so that's it so hence q1 q2 q3 it is option a very good mohammed it is not d bachcha net electric flux is only because of the enclosed charges enclosed charges next question same diagram but a different uh, variety some different thing is asked the field e in the gauss formula remember you will use the gauss formula like this right integral electric field dot the area vector is enclosed charge q1 plus q2 plus q3 divided by epsilon naught so that electric field which is there that electric field which is there that is because of come on if you have been paying attention you know the answer already yep very good partha sarathi dr asta mohana very good mohammed this answer is all very nice like i told you the lhs is because of all the charges so when you draw the electric field over here when you draw the electric field over here this electric field is because of because of e1 because of e2 because of e3 superposition that's all e4 and e5 the superposition of all of them so that's how it works so electric field will be here maybe area vector is here so it's because of all the charges very interesting 
very important are you now ready to apply gauss's law are you now ready to derive the different formulas i know some of you might know those formulas already but let's go with the derivation let's understand how it works and let's see the application if you noticed that you know in the last few slides just before i ended gauss's law i told you that gauss law is true for all the surfaces right i told you that and you when you have to apply gauss's law you choose a surface so that maybe some charges are inside some charges are outside it could be possible right and you chose a surface such that there is a good continuous uniform distribution and it is very easy to find the field when it has some kind of symmetry in it it is used to facilitate it is used to facilitate you know the finding out of the electric field in a much simpler manner that is what i had told you in the previous slides okay so that is what all these previous slides talked about let's actually put it to use only then you will understand whatever i had written over there now the certain important things that you need to keep in mind in order to in order to find field easily okay first step choose a gaussian surface choose a gaussian surface which is based on symmetry based on symmetry based on symmetry okay very very important based on symmetry next important thing it should be such that maybe at certain places at certain places your area vector okay the area vector at certain places will be in the direction of the field will be in the direction of the field at certain places it will be basically area vector will be perpendicular to the direction of the field so both situations are possible my dear students okay you will see in certain places it could be parallel to the field area vector in certain places it will be perpendicular so when it is parallel then obviously in such cases maximum flux will pass max flux will pass and it will be basically a into e but in this case no flux will pass no flux will pass because theta is 90 cos 90 is 0 okay so there will be no flux at all in that particular area where the field is perpendicular to the area vector is that clear everybody are these two concepts clear yep now let's put it to use so let's start with the first geometry which is linear charge distribution then we'll go to surface charge distribution then go to volume charge distribution so let's take up okay imagine i have a uniformly a uniformly charged uniformly charged wire okay i have a uniformly charged wire so how does that uniformly charged wire look like oops not like this for sure okay this is your uniformly charged wire it has charges everywhere across its length so which parameter will you give lambda sigma or rho what parameter you will need guys linear charge density aerial charge density or basically volume charge density obviously the charges are along the length along the wire so you would need lambda so lambda is given which is basically charge per unit length will be needed charge per unit length i had told you about this in the previous class please watch it in case you have missed it okay can you guess how will the field look like it is infinitely long please understand it is there on the top also it is there below also it is there till infinity on both sides both sides it is there till infinity how will the electric field look like i feel it should look something like this some field will come here some field will come here some field will go behind also some field will go here also just check this i think it will look like this and in every plane it will be there yeah it will be radially outwards it will be radially outwards perfect yes it will be radially outwards and it will be also one more thing guys it will be perpendicular to that line it will be 
perpendicular to that line also correct so be perpendicular to that line something like this see if this makes sense see if this makes sense exactly so it is symmetrically placed symmetrically distributed that is how the electric field is radial is radial and perpendicular to that particular wire now i have to think how to calculate this e my job is to find the value of e using gauss law i know in gauss law i have to choose a gaussian surface without that i cannot proceed so to find field i'm using gauss law to use gauss law i need a gaussian surface how do i choose a gaussian surface i have told you it should be based on symmetry it should make sure that some places field is parallel or perpendicular to that area i feel that i think i can choose one area can you name that surface which i should choose so that it is symmetric it is convenient for me to find the field i think you know what to do i think you know what to do yes very good shafiq i think i should make it look like a cylinder yep very good very good proud of all of you let me draw a cylinder now okay now if i had to break the cylinder into surfaces i had to break the cylinder into different surfaces there will be one top surface correct that top surface will be there check this out maybe i'll shade it in a different color this surface can you see that this surface is there there is also a surface below again circular and obviously there is that curved surface and obviously there is that curved surface very why not cuboid because in a cuboid what will happen my dear student okay because the field is like this radial in the cube what will happen the field lines will make certain angle with the surface of that cube that is the problem okay just imagine if there is a cube it will start making angles with the surface and i don't like angles i want 0 or 90 i don't want anything else that is the reason why i chose cylinder can you guys tell me when i write when i write gauss's law like this okay just observe just observe total flux is equal to enclosed charge by epsilon not okay by epsilon not maybe i will just put it on the top so that i get more space this flux will have contribution from three surfaces flux from the top surface the one which i have shaded over here correct this one plus the flux from the bottom surface plus the flux from the bottom surface correct and there will be also flux from the curved surface which is unshaded from the curved surface which is right now unshaded is equal to q in by epsilon not now you clearly observe the diagram and tell me isn't the field isn't the field parallel to that surface which is on the top and at the bottom at the top and at the bottom isn't it parallel is it piercing through it is it cutting through it i think so no it is just like this diagram the field line is parallel to that surface or perpendicular to that area vector so can you tell me the contribution of the flux because of the top part and the bottom part what is the contribution of the flux at the top part and at the bottom part i think it is just parallel to that surface it is not going inside out of that surface it is parallel it is not going in or not going out of that surface hence their contribution should be big fat zero right zero plus zero but on the curved surface it is there on the curved surface it is definitely contributing you can in fact see that also if i take an area vector if i take an area vector there is a field which is parallel to that particular area vector 
if I take some small surface over here, you can see the area vector and that field are parallel. So I can just say that contribution will be there integral electric field dot area is equal to oh wait a minute I did not do anything with the right hand side I did not do anything with the right hand side how much charge will be there only inside that cylinder let's assume the height of the cylinder to be h the distance or the radius of that cylinder to be r radius of the cylinder to be r how much charge is there in that h height cylinder of radius r oh I know what to do lambda is charge per unit length lambda is charge per unit length so whatever charge is there inside whatever charge is there inside can you think it is there in how much length in that h length so what is that length it is basically h so my dear students what will be the value of q in it will be basically lambda into h the value of q will be lambda into h think about it yep everybody with me lambda is charge per unit length that charge which is inside is on the h length h is the height of the cylinder so might as well write q in as i can write it as lambda into h divided by epsilon naught okay one last thing now isn't this electric field the same everywhere everywhere on the surface isn't it same my dear students everywhere on the surface on that curved surface isn't it same so when it is same that means it is constant can I not take electric field outside the integration can I not take electric field outside that particular integration and what will remain only adding the areas of that particular curved part is equal to lambda h by epsilon naught everyone now what is adding all the area small 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 areas on the curved surface the total curved surface area integration means addition summation dm means small 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 patches you add all the patches what is the total area of that curved surface my dear students what is the total area of that curved surface my dear students come on curved surface area is 2 pi r h 2 pi r h very good this will be equal to lambda h by epsilon naught the best part is h and h just got cancelled h and h just got cancelled and if I may use this particular space somewhere in the corner I think I have found the value of epsilon naught just take 2 pi r below just take that 2 pi r below my dear students so electric field will be lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r that's it that is the answer that is the complete answer done 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 electric field is lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r i found it out was this derivation very interesting did you learn a lot okay i have put that figure also over here just for your understanding in case you want to practice this derivation it's there in ncrt and you can see the formula is exactly what we have derived lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r why not 4 pi because it did not come out 4 pi what can i do it did not come that's how the derivation is you cannot say sir why not 6 pi i can ask you one question Muhammad. why is it not 6 pi tell me so there is no reason for that it is how it is that is why maths is there you derive oh by the way if you want to write it in 4 pi epsilon naught you can always write it as 1 pi 4 pi epsilon naught but then you'll have to put 2 lambda on the top divided by r that is also valid this is also valid guys if you want to put 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught okay but then you have to multiply by 2 only then the equality will be maintained else it will not be equal is that clear everybody understood this derivation put a thumbs up mr creative folks you mixed a lot go back and watch from the beginning correct all right yes it is for spherical symmetry yes Mohammed. it is 4 pi for cylindrical linear it is not 4 pi shall we go to the next geometry shall we go to the next geometry my dear students okay and this is basically uniformly charged sheet uniformly charged charged sheet 
let's take a uniformly charged sheet for a uniformly charged sheet what parameter must be given what parameter must be given can you think about it my dear students charge per unit length charge per unit area charge per unit volume obviously come on sigma exactly which is the charge per unit area must be given to you must be given to you yes very good shafiq akanya awesome so let us just like we have drawn the diagram over here we'll try to draw a diagram of a sheet all right so this is a sheet oops this is a sheet containing charges everywhere okay so this is a sheet containing charges like this how will the electric field look like first think about it to find the electric field i should draw the electric field lines no first it's a big uniform sheet huge each charge will give field both sides this side also that side also but since it's a very long large sheet the field will not be curved i think the field lines will go parallel to each other just like over here the field lines were radial okay in the previous case i think over here the field lines will be basically parallel just like this just like this just like this very good it will also go behind my dear students it will also go behind like this now is this field non uniform or uniform just put it up in the chat box is this field uniform or non uniform just put it up in the chat box come on everybody should get this everybody should be able to get this is this field uniform or non uniform definitely it is nothing but uniform field very good it's a uniform electric field awesome awesome okay now i want to find how much this field is so what i will do i will choose a gaussian surface how will i choose a gaussian surface observe carefully i will choose a gaussian surface which has a part of the sheet inside of it some part of the gaussian surface will be towards the left some part will be towards the right so how about choosing a gaussian surface maybe like this okay just i've just drawn some random figure guys it doesn't matter mm-hmm just check this out i'm just erasing few parts so that you can visualize it something like this are you able to visualize it now is it better is it better to visualize now just think about it it's piercing through it are you able to visualize that shape yeah there is something which is there behind also but i'm not showing it very nice now i think again i can see that there are three surfaces which are formed over here okay there are three surfaces which are formed over here one surface is over here one surface is over here other surface is over here other surface is over here and the rest is that curved surface rest is that curved surface okay let's apply gauss's law and see what happens according to gauss's law net flux is the charge which is inside by epsilon not charge which is inside by epsilon not that flux is a contribution of flux from three different surface flux from the left flux from the right left side is this one right side is this one and the flux from that particular curved surface flux from that particular 
curved surface which is you know surrounding it this is equal to your q in divided by epsilon naught now here the interesting thing is where is the flux zero whose contribution is zero is left side zero is right side zero or the curved surface zero if you can answer it i would be really proud of all of you look at the field lines how they are going i feel that the curved surface contribution is zero because on that curved surface on that particular curved surface if you draw that area vector if you draw that area vector you will notice that the electric field is basically perpendicular to it so basically it is not piercing through that curved surface cos 90 is zero hence that curved surface contribution is definitely a big fat zero now comes the left and the right part we will talk about each one of them separately okay many of you think that left side will give positive contribution right side will give negative contribution or i don't know negative positive one will be negative one will be positive i feel that is incorrect i told you at the beginning of the class only i told you at the beginning of the class only that when you have a closed surface outward flux is positive inward flux is negative that is the sign convention right this is what i told you at the beginning of the class so think and tell me on the right side isn't the flux going out isn't the flux going out on the left side isn't the flux going again out only so both places it is going out both places it is going out so that means both places it is positive okay what if i assume this particular area to be a even this particular area to be a this is also a assume and this is also a so what will be the flux on the left it will be plus e a and on the right also it will be plus e a left also right also both e into a field is uniform so no need of integration e into a e into a positive positive and enclosed charge this is very interesting how much charge do you think that the sheet oh sorry that surface is cutting inside that sheet how much charge do you think is there in this particular enclosed part how much charge do you think is there in this particular enclosed part come on guys only that much part if i tell that sigma is q in by epsilon naught sigma is basically q, sorry not q in by epsilon naught sigma is q in by that particular area isn't that right think about it that particular curved surface that entire gaussian surface is piercing through this sheet how much charge is there in this particular part q in uh, and how much area that same area a so that is your surface charge density enclosed charge by your area that's it so q in will be sigma a q in will be nothing but how much my dear students sigma into a that's it that divided by epsilon naught very good very good so this will just become two times of e a will be sigma a by epsilon naught area area will cancel so hence electric field will be sigma by two epsilon naught that is my final answer exactly what i wanted this is how the derivation is done beautiful derivation sigma by two epsilon naught for a charged sheet okay sigma by 2 epsilon naught for a charge sheet i have done the derivation in a very beautiful simple manner explaining you each and every step okay so even while revising even while preparing for boards if you watch this lecture right it will be very useful for you let me tell you that and i hope you guys are smashing the like button and also subscribing to the channel in case you have forgotten to do so just reminding you last part is for a shell okay or for a spherical geometry let's do that as well so basically you know i'm going to take a spherical spherical shell this is one of the easiest of them all trust me it's a shell which is uniformly charged meaning like this the charges are there the charges are there okay on the 
on the surface only the charges are there only on the surface not inside not outside not at the center only on that shell imagine a hollow sphere basically shell also means basically a hollow sphere hollow sphere it has a only some very negligible thickness now assume that the radius of that particular shell assume that the radius of that particular shell is r the total charge on that shell is let's say q the total charge on that particular shell is basically q now there are two cases for this that is very important so let me just uh, create a duplicate of this I will take two cases. The first case when I'm inside, the second case when I'm outside. So I'm taking two cases because inside it will behave differently, outside it may behave differently. So if I draw a Gaussian surface inside, okay, if I take this is my nothing but Gaussian surface, keep this in mind. Gaussian surface, Gaussian surface which is there inside and if I apply Gauss law which is total flux is enclosed charge by epsilon naught and flux is nothing but integration of field with area vector the inside charge what is the inside charge come on what is the charge inside that blue surface can you guys quickly think and tell me how much charge is there inside that surface nothing is there Every charge is on the, on the uh, shell, not even one charge is there inside that Gaussian surface. So it's a big fat zero. So if RHS is going to be zero, LHS has to be zero. That means electric field has to be zero. LHS has to be zero. That means electric field has to be zero. That means inside a charged shell, inside a charged shell which is hollow sphere the field is basically zero that is the conclusion of this particular uh, derivation that should be the conclusion of this particular derivation everybody agrees with this pointer very good very good understood simple egpg lemon squeegee egpg lemon squeegee very good now let's take the second case what if I am outside? What if I am outside? Achha. Now, here I feel it will not be zero. Definitely, my dear students. Okay, it will not be zero. Uh, let me just take this Gaussian surface. Okay, this is done. Okay, let me write this as my Gaussian surface. Okay, now I know one thing because it is sphere. How will the field look like? The field will be symmetrically there everywhere up down top bottom left right. So I have a feeling the field lines will look something like this. The electric field lines very very important will look something like this uniformly spreading radial field right. So the field will basically be radial. So radial, radial electric field will definitely be there. Very good. Everybody understanding this? Now, if you take any point on that sphere, which has, let's say, just take any patch basically, just imagine it to be like this. This is some patch. It has some area vector like this da how will the electric field at that location be how will that electric field at that location be electric field will also be like this only electric field will be parallel to it exactly like this correct awesome that's how it will look like this is very important in the derivation you will see why now let's use gauss law according to gauss law i would say integration of electric field with the area vector is the inside charge by epsilon naught. 
is the inside charge by epsilon naught. Now I'll tell you what, everywhere electric field and area vector are parallel. So when I expand this, I write the dot product as E dA into cos theta, that theta will be zero degree. The theta will be basically zero degree. Agree with this or not? What is cos zero? Cos zero is one. Cos of cos of zero is basically one and electric field is a constant electric field is a constant so i can just take it outside electric field is same everywhere whether you go here or here or here or here every place the electric field is same so i can just take it outside the integration so it will just become e integration of da cos zero is one is equal to inside charge by epsilon naught very good now what is the integration of all these areas i take all these areas on the sphere if i add all these areas what am i going to get the total surface area of the sphere so integration means addition and i'm adding all the small small patches of areas so what is that area that i will get my dear students the surface of a sphere which is 4 pi r square small r okay not capital r 4 pi r square what is the inside charge how much charge do you think is there inside this big blue sphere i think all these yellow charges which i have shown is there inside this particular gaussian surface so should i not just put that as basically your q divided by your epsilon naught q divided by that epsilon naught everybody with me very nice so let me take 4 pi r square on the other side so e will be q by q by 4 pi r square epsilon naught but i will write it in a beautiful form i will write 4 pi epsilon naught before then i will put q then i will put r square this is just like your coulomb's law this is how in fact coulomb's law can be derived using you know uh, gauss's law so this is exactly what you would expect it to be. This is exactly what you would expect it to be. So you know what I will write as a concluding statement. The field, see, the field outside a charged shell, outside a charged shell, how is it behaving? KQ by R square. K Q by R square, yes, Mohammed, yes, Shafiq, yes, Asta, yes, come on, Akankya, Shreya, come on. How does it look like? Doesn't it look like the field formula because of a point charge? So the field outside a charge shell is like a point charge at the center of the shell. As just like a point charge at the center of the shell. So that is the final, final conclusion that is the final final conclusion again very important so i've taken both the cases when you are outside as well as when you are inside my dear students both the cases have been taken inside it is zero outside it is uh, behaving like a point charge so in fact sometimes a question might even come on the graph of it question might even come on the graph of it how will the graph look like can somebody think and draw it on the rough sheet and see if it matches? How will the graph of that electric field looks like with distance, with distance for a charge shell? Inside it is zero. Inside it is zero. So it will be zero for a long time. It will be a big fat zero for a long time till you reach the radius R. This is basically inside. But the moment you reach outside, it is inversely proportional to R square. So immediately what will happen is it will jump. Okay, it immediately outside it will jump like this to a particular value and then it will be a curve like this. It will be like this outside. So it is basically inversely proportional to R square. That's what I would say. Yep. No, it's not rectangular hyperbola. Rectangular hyperbola is when it is inversely proportional to R, not R square. So don't call it rectangular hyperbola, okay? It is wrong. 
rectangular hyperbola is only in the case of 1 by r, not r square or r cube or r raised to 4. It's just a curve, some curve. Okay, be careful. All right. Cool. I think we can do some questions. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Show me some fire in the chat box. Yeah, come on. Show me some fire in the chat box. Ready? Okay, here we go. Here comes the question up on your screen. There is a sphere which has an electric dipole with charge plus minus 3 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. How much is the total flux across the sphere? Come on. Need 2019. Everybody should be able to answer. There is a charge of plus 3 micro coulomb and minus 3 micro coulomb. This together becomes nothing but a dipole. This is nothing but a dipole. Exactly. So my dear students, if I take a sphere which encloses both of them, how much is the total charge enclosed? How much is the total charge enclosed? It is zero. Hence the total flux is a big fat zero. This question came in neat. Can you believe that? Yes, zero is the answer. Okay. Simple EGPG lemon squeezy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Moving on. Very good. C for Capto. Moving on to the next question. Need 2011. This is slightly, not very little, but you just have to think about the direction. Yeah. Two wires are there. One wire lambda, one another wire minus lambda. That means one wire is positive, one wire is negative. What is the field exactly in between the wires? Draw the diagram, everything will be clear. Imagine one wire here, another wire here. Okay. One wire is basically positively charged one wire is basically positively charged other wire is just negatively charged plus lambda and minus lambda the distance between them is 2r question is exactly at the midpoint that means somewhere over here what do you think the field will be so obviously midpoint means this would be r and even this would be also r correct this would be r and even this would be r can you guys think because of the left side wire, what will happen? The positive charge will give a field towards the right side. Positive charge will give a field towards the right side, correct? What will be the direction of the field because of the negative wire? Because of this negative wire, field will be attractive, no? Field will be attractive. So at that point, again, the field will be towards the right side only. Yes or no? Yes or no? So is the field adding or subtracting to find the net field when you try to find the net field will this field because of positive and field because of negative are they cancelling or are they adding obviously they are adding up obviously they are adding up and because of the symmetry I think it will be two times of any one of the field either plus or the negative because of symmetry correct so what is the field because of the positive wire it will be lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught distance is basically r 2 2 cancels so it will be lambda by pi epsilon naught r so where is that answer lambda by pi epsilon naught r, r. again there as option c only yeah lot of students in need 2011 they marked the answer as zero and they got minus one marks how is it zero it is not cancelling Many people thought, sir, 1 plus 1 minus cancel, no, sir. Are look at the direction. The positive is giving right side. Negative is also giving right side only. If both were positive or both were negative, then they would have cancelled and then the answer would have been 0. Okay? That is not 0 in this case. Yes. Okay. A hollow metallic sphere of radius R is uniformly charged. The field due to the sphere at a distance R from the center. Everybody should spam this answer. Everybody should spam this answer. Come on. How will that field look like? This is a neat 2019 question, my dear warriors. Figure this bit out. What do you think is the correct answer to this particular question? Decreases, increases, zero, whatever. I just told you, no, the graph, how does it look like? It starts with zero, then suddenly jumps and then again goes like this. So my dear students, what is it? Zero as R increases for inside, exactly this part is basically for inside and then what happens it decreases as r increases beyond it so this is for basically outside 
this is basically for outside exactly so hence option c again wow everything is captain everything is captain c for capital very good excellent there is a homework question what are you going to do immediately after the class you are going to solve that homework question and post the answers in the comment section okay that's your homework guys make sure you solve it immediately i'll be checking all your answers and last time also many students have done the homework and i'm really really proud of all of you i have personally seen and commented on each and every homework uh, that you have posted in the comment section okay i hope you enjoyed the class smash the like button leave a comment say sir i loved the session sir i understood and everybody should post hashtag electro uh, sorry chapter 1 done chapter 1 is done everybody post in the comments hashtag chapter 1 done with your captain that's it okay let everybody else also get tensed that oh my god i did not do this chapter let me watch this class everybody should post it make it make it a habit to post in the comments nobody should leave without posting a comment without smashing the like button and also subscribing to the channel as well as the telegram channel bye bye asal vista captain shea signing off take care